And this one is pro this one's probably the hardest, I'd say. Um, and so marriage tip number three uh, for this week is to um, confront and overcome conflicts and challenges. Confront and overcome conflicts and challenges. So not only um, overcome them, you know, so you'll have a conflict in your marriage, you'll have a conflict in your relationship, not only overcome them, but confront it. Because I think it's human nature for us to try and avoid it, isn't it? We try and avoid confrontation. We try and avoid um, uh, c confronting each other. But I don't think that's healthy for a marriage and I don't think that's healthy for any relationship. So point number one is, you know, don't avoid confrontation. Don't avoid confrontation because confrontation is inevitable, right? And when we're people, we're sinners. I remember last week we talked about having open and proactive communication. I mean, the more open and the more proactive you are with your communication, the more likely it's going to be that you're going to have conflict, right? So you need to deal with conflict and you need to deal with it in a biblical way and, and just confront it because generally the best way to deal with conflict is just confront it with humility and have it out in the open and talk about it so that you can deal with it. So don't avoid confrontation. Uh, problems are inevitable, aren't they? Um, so have strife and overcome it. Um, just, I just wanted to show you this verse. It, it, it's not really to do with, I guess, relationship, but you know, look at what Jesus says here. He says, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So Jesus, even to his disciples, didn't say, Try and avoid all conflict. Try and avoid all tribulation. He says, no, 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 in the world you will have tribulation. So it's not about how do we avoid tribulation in the Christian life. It's about how to live the Christian life and deal with the tribulation, right? Having the right way to deal with it rather than avoiding it totally. So open and proactive communication will naturally lead to conflict. So it's very foolish to try and avoid it to begin with. So we need to learn to handle it rather than avoid it. And, you know, don't let things fester in your relationship because the longer you let it fester, the longer you let it breathe, the harder it's going to be to deal with. Every time I think of conflict in a relationship, I always think of dirty dishes. You know, I'm doing the dirty dishes and, you know, if you left dishes out for a really long time and then you go to clean them, it's a lot harder to clean the dishes, isn't it? So it's like with dirt in your life. It's like the longer you leave it and the longer it sort of festers and it bakes in and it ingrains, it, the harder it is it's going to be to clean it out. And that's why whenever there's a conflict, I mean, think about just, just in your, your natural life, right? You're just in, amongst friends or family. Whenever you have a conflict, what do you naturally do? You naturally want to put it off and just think, oh, time will let it uh, go away. But it, it doesn't. It, it just festers and, and bitterness rises. So you need to, in the spirit, when you have a conflict, to force yourself to confront it. You know, and I found in my marriage that the earlier I deal with it, as uncomfortable as it is and as hard as it hits the pride, the earlier you deal with it, the better it'll be. Because the, the more time goes on, um, the worse it's going to be for you. Uh, look at this verse here in Ephesians. Ephesians 4 says, Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. So you might think, well, how, how does this, I never thought of this passage as, uh, you know, as a relationship. We always think about where I'm heading to, which is um, don't let the sun go down upon your wrath. But what does verse 25 have to do with relationships? Well, you know, it's about being open and proactive communication, right? It's about being open and honest with each other. So we don't lie with one another. We don't say everything's fine when not everything's fine. We don't say nothing's bothering me when something is bothering you. You need to be honest with one another so you know what each other's thinking. So it says here, wherefore, put away lying. Don't lie to your spouse. Don't lie to your husband. Don't lie to your wife. Speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be angry and sin not. So I just want to point this out, and you guys know that anger is not a sin. You know, it's not a sin to be angry, because the Bible says, be angry and sin not. So there is a time to be angry at certain things. There is a time to be angry at sin. And sometimes we see things in the world and we ought to be angry at it, right? We see what's, what's happening out there in the world. But it says, be angry and sin not. So don't do wrong. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. So how do we apply this to a marriage? Well, if, you're going, if you've had a conflict that day, you have to deal with it that day. 
Deal with it as soon as possible. Don't, don't go to bed before dealing with that conflict and resolving it. And it's actually a sin if you do. Because the Bible says, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. That means you don't let a conflict or your anger continue to the next day. Neither give place to the devil. Because if you do, that's where Satan is going to get a foothold within that relationship and he will wreak some havoc. And, you know, because the husband and wife are like the bedrock of that family, if the husband and wife have strife, it's going to naturally have a knock-on effect to the children, to the extended family, and things like that. So it's very important that as husband and wife, you keep things together and have peace there, um, because that's, going to, that's the glue, really, that's holding the whole family together. Okay, so that's point number one. Don't avoid confrontation. Problems are inevitable. So if you have strife, you need to overcome it. 